Good afternoon and welcome to 4HTV episode 5 where we will be sharing our demonstrations with you. Don't forget 4H is so good and it can brighten your future where you'll need your glasses all the time. Hi, my name is Eliana Garver and I am 14 years old and I'm going into 9th grade at Portland High School. This is my 6th year in 4H. My projects this year are filmmaking and beekeeping. I am currently the Vice President of the 4-H Club. My name is Lucas Alexander and I'm the President of the For the Mighty Eagles 4-H Club. I'm going into the 8th grade at Fordland Middle School and this is my 7th year in 4-H. I do goats, leadership, welding, and small engines. Today's episode is our first group of Mighty Eagles demonstrations. A demonstration is a presentation where the 4-H'er picks a topic that they like and demonstrates it. We usually do demonstrations at Achievement Day. Webster County 4-H'ers this last May did their demonstrations at Achievement Day to win awards and get their demonstrations rated. Let's start with Annie, who is new to the group, with her demonstration about chickens. I love my chickens and love my giving treats. For this reason, I decided to do my demonstration on toxic and non-toxic treats for chickens. It's important to keep your chickens healthy. So we gotta make sure that we don't accidentally make them sick. Some examples of non-toxic treats are watermelon, bread, insect, berries, <coughs> and corn. Some examples of toxic treats are raw beans, candy, raw onions, avocado skin, and pork. But the part we eat is fine as long as it does not touch the skin of it. Fun fact, snakes are actually non-toxic for chicken, so if your favorite Chicken that runs after a snake, don't be scared. It's just looking for a snack. Mm -hmm. that, that is my demonstration. Thank you. Are there any questions? Do you have chickens? Yes. How many chickens do you have? Two. Two? Did you name them? Yes. What are their names? One name, one's name is Pete's and the other one's name is Nugget. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great job, Annie. I never knew that avocado skins were toxic for chickens. And thank you to Smidgold Family Woodworks for sponsoring this demonstration. Next up on our demonstration list is Luke, and he will be doing a demonstration on how to make a chicken feeder. This is my first year in 4-H. I am a member of my 
see horse in the riding hill, right here, right now. Find your home in any project, su project supplies. Locally, they have sponsored the stand station. The stand station will use the following items. My paper to mold the represents four inch by five foot long schedule for the plastic tubing and covers two eyelet <coughs> screws and two white. Take tubing, saw out the top, take tubing, saw out the top, leave three inches on the ends. Place one eyelet screw on each end. Place tin cans or plastic covers from the store. Insert long metal wires for hanging on each side. Review steps. Take the plastic tube from the farm store, cut out the top <coughs> with the circular saw, and then leave the inches the plastic on the edge of the eyelet screw thing. Then put two plastic, then put two bottoms of a can on the edge. Two out, then screw two out screws on the end of the plastic tube. Then put two wires on the edge of and put them in the two out screws. Start using a bit one more as the burners grow ways up the feed so they don't come and if you get it dirty or they don't knock it over. Are there any questions? What kind of birds can eat in that? Well, we, we use the, we use this, we use this, we use this for meat hens. For meat hens. How long does it take you to make one of those? Um, like a few hours. If you like, want to finish it in one day, then it takes Thanks again to CHC for sponsoring Luke's demonstration.
Luke, I really liked how you showed us in depth on how to build the chicken feeder. Now that we've fed the chickens, they'll start producing eggs. Let's go over to Evie, where she'll show us how to cook an egg. to wait for it to get all warm. It's not going to work. <laughs> These eggs have nutrients, protein, and vitamins. It's getting warm, but it's barely melting. You want to starts to melt, you kind of want to put it, you want kind of want to stir it all around. You want to keep on waiting. Right now it's on the max because it won't go any higher than five. I'm just going to crack my egg right now because it's not. <laughs> Always want to crack your egg on a flat surface so it doesn't contain any bacteria. You open it up, sit it down, wipe your hands off, and you start kind of like scrambling it. And you want it to, and when you're scrambling it, you always want to hold the pan so it doesn't slip off and fall out of your pan because then you would have to restart. And you always want your egg to not get overcooked or um, not over, I mean, or not cooked enough because then you might have too much of a runny egg or too much of a crispy like egg. Sometimes in the middle of, so right now I'm gonna turn off my stove because um, it will already be hot enough to cook. It's gonna start to, s and you want to get all the egg mixed up the same amount so you have a really yummy egg. When it starts kind of getting a little drier, it will be ready to eat. Alright, I think we've 
finish cooking the mix, so we take it off, put it on a plate, and it right there, and we're done. You cooked your second egg. Good job, Evie. That looks like a delicious egg. And thanks to Reese Nichols Real Estate for sponsoring Evie's demonstration. Next up is Lucas with his demonstration about horsepower. Today's demonstration is brought to you by High Lines Diesel Performance and Machine. My name is Lucas Alexander and I am 13 years old. I am the president of the For the Mighty Eagles 4-H Club and my projects this year are meat goats, leadership, welding, and small engines. Today, I will be talking about how horsepower works in anything that has engine. The inventor that built the first steam engine, James Watt, is credited with coming up with the term horsepower. He came up with the term and did the math simply because he wanted to show everyone who used horses every day, like farmers and miners, how much more they could get done with his steam engine than they could with their horses. Horsepower is a measurement that shows the rate at work, which work is done. One horsepower is how much power it takes to do 550 foot-pounds of work in one second. This means that 33,000 foot-pounds of work can be done in one minute with one horsepower. Work is force multiplied by distance. And power is equal to fuel plus oxygen. And the less time to do a given amount of work requires more power. For, any, for example, if you want to move the car one fourth of a mile with one horsepower, it's going to take a lot longer than if you have a 200 horsepower car to move your car that one fourth of a mile. In order to show you how horsepower works, I will use two tractors to demonstrate which one can plow the field and which one cannot. In order to do this, I will show how many hor how much horsepower will dissipate at each point power is needed. For this demonstration, I will be using 1 16th scale size tractors, and I will be using a six bottom John Deere plow. As a rule of thumb, each plow needs 20 horsepower. Let's start with the 3020 John Deere, which has an engine horsepower of 72. And the draw bar can transmit 61. But since the plow has six <coughs> bottoms and each plow needs 20 horsepower, the draw bar can only transmit half the power needed to pull the whole plow. At the rated implement speed for John Deere, is 4.4 miles per hour. Now let's move on to the Alice Chalmers 8030. The Alice Chalmers 8030 has 135 horsepower. If the plow needs 120 horsepower, you take 120 horsepower from the motor and you give it to the plow. And whatever horsepower the plow doesn't need, it won't use. Because horsepower comes from the motor, which only produces enough power to overcome the resistance. So if the resistance only requires 120 horsepower, that's all it will use. 
So if your plowing conditions are perfect, you'll have about 15 horsepower left over for your tractor to use in other places, like the air conditioner and alternator. Are there any questions? I don't know what to ask because I don't know all that much about tractors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How do you make more horsepower? Well, there is ways to tune engines to make them produce more horsepower. But if you tune them too much, it could be unsafe. Or you can buy a bigger tractor. <laughs> Are there any more questions? If not, this concludes my demonstration. Thank you. Good job, Lucas. That was an informative and well-demonstrated demonstration. Thanks to Highlands Diesel Performance for sponsoring this demonstration. You know, I was pretty nervous when I dropped my tractor off the table. My poor tractor. <laughs> Next up is Carson. She will talk about how to wrap a present. So when Christmas comes around, you will be well prepared. Is pink your favorite color? It's a good choice. Good job, Carson. Maybe I'll do better at wrapping my Christmas gifts next, next Christmas. Yeah, I usually just put them in gift bags. I mean, what's the big deal? But hey, maybe I can do a better job this year. Next up is Blaine with his demonstration on how to change the oil. Hi, my name is Blaine Kendall and I am nine years old. I'm a member of the Mighty Eagles 4-H Club. I have been a 4-H member for one year. Uh, my 4-H projects this year are swell engines and welding. Today the subject of my demonstration is changing oil, is how to change the oil in a motor and why. 
I've selected this topic because most engines need the oil changed. Um, um, for my demonstration, I will need the following items. An engine, new oil, oil catch can, measuring cup, oil filter, and oil filter wrench and heater. This motor doesn't have an oil filter, so we won't need to change that. Um, with, I'm not going to warm the engine up today because it's we're inside. Um, so now I am going to find the oil plug and take it out. Um, and if you don't know where, um, how much oil your motor takes, um, or what oil your motor takes, you can look in the owner's manual, and it should tell you. Once all the oil is drained, put your oil plug back in and tighten it up. your motor has an oil filter, that now is the time you would want to change it. Now, this, this motor takes a special kind of oil, a racing oil, and this is um, four cycle medium racing oil. This motor takes 14 ounces of oil and now I will remove the plug the oil cap and pour the oil in. Now that all the oil is into the motor, I will put the oil cap back on. explain why you need to change the oil in your motor. The reason why you need to change the oil in your motor is because over time it will collect dirt and metal and once and if in the metal will the dirt and metal will start scratching on components inside of your motor and once it does that it will um, your motor won't run properly and the parts of your motor won't, um, they won't move right. Um, I'm going to tell you what we learned. We learned how to change the oil in a four cycle motor. Um, we learned why you need to change the oil in a motor. And we learned how you need to, how, um, what you need to change the oil. Um, and if you need your oil changed um, and you, because you don't feel like doing it yourself, you can go to R&J's Auto Repair and Auto Store. Are there any questions? What type of motor is that? Um, this
this is a four stroke. What would you use it in? Um, this one we um, would use it on a go kart. Yes. Do you do classes for adults? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great job, Blaine, on getting that oil changed on that engine. I hope it runs good when you get it back on a machine. Blaine's demonstration was sponsored by RNJ Auto Repair, and we would like th to thank them again for sponsoring his demonstration. Blaine had the top score in the juniors. Let's talk about some of this summer's 4-H events. 4-H events that are going on this summer is the Webster County Fair, which Eliana and I will be exhibiting projects into. <laughs> I don't go to the other thing. I made a frog. <laughs> <laughs> I made a poster board uh, showing my bee demonstration. My frog hops around pretty good. He's like alive, and you know how they twitch after like you cook them and things. It's okay. That's a little silly, if you but want to see our 4-H uh, projects, you can go up to the Webster County Fair in Marshfield. Thanks to K. Raj for allowing us to film and use their equipment at the K. Raj Studio today to share our demonstrations with you. Be on the lookout for episode 6 for the other half of our demonstrations. They say we're going to do it next month, but I'm not sure if I could believe them or not. No. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.